Today I'm here not only as president, as I've mentioned before, I'm also here as an adopted member of the Pro Nation. So I'd like to recognize uh, my adopted mom and dad, uh, Sonny and Mary, black people who are backstage. They're going to be coming out here in a little bit. I'm so grateful they took me into their family. Uh, I bet they're grateful that I never went through the terrible twos or <laughs> <laughs> terrible teens. You know. they, they, they got me after I, I was a little more polished. Uh, you, know, you know, Ken Salazar, uh, he worked so hard on the issues that matter uh, to all of you. Uh, and we also have members of Congress here as well who are great partners in this effort. Uh, and I finally, I want to give a shout out to the young people who are here as part of the White House program called Champions for Change. <laughs> really remarkable young people. I had a chance to meet them backstage. Uh, there's Teresa Baldwin, who's uh, working to prevent teen suicide among uh, Alaska natives. Uh, LaVon Thomas, who's bringing green jobs to the Navajo Nation. Uh, Dallas. Uh, DePlessis, who started a gardening club to promote healthy eating uh, in uh, Tule Lip, uh, Washington. She, she wrote, uh, our goal is not to be couch potatoes, but to grow some potatoes. <laughs> so I, think, I think Michelle would like that one. <laughs> Standing in this room uh, with leaders of all ages, uh, it's impossible not to be optimistic about the future of Indian country. Obviously, we face tough times. But you still believe that tomorrow can be better than today. You're out there making your communities better places to live. What you expect and what you deserve is a federal government that helps, not hinders, your efforts. You deserve leaders in Washington who fight for you every single day. And that's one of the reasons I ran for this office. You know, when I visited the Crow Nation during the campaign, I said my job was not just to win an election, it was to make sure that Washington starts focusing on you. I promised a true government-to-government -government relationship, a relationship that recognizes our sometimes painful history, a relationship that respects the unique heritage of Native Americans, and that includes you in the dreams that we all share. And together, we're building that relationship. I told you I would bring tribal leaders to Washington to reflect uh, to develop an agenda that reflects your hopes and your concerns. And now for a third year in a row, we have kept that promise. I told you that when I was president, we wouldn't just pay lip service to the idea of consultation. And today we're holding every cabinet agency responsible for working together with Indian tribes. I told you I'd appoint Native Americans to senior positions in the White House, and I know that many of you have worked with Kim Teehee and Cherokee Nation, my senior policy advisor for Native American issues, Charlie Galbraith of the Navajo Nation and our Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. We're working to make our government-to-government -government relationship even stronger. We ask Congress to recognize the power of tribes to prosecute perpetrators of domestic violence, whether they're Indian or non-Indian. And in the wake of the Cartier decision, we've asked Congress to restore the Secretary of the Interior's authority to take land into trust for federally recognized Indian tribes. So this new relationship represents a major step forward. It is change. But I promised even more than that. I told you that as president, I would work with you to tackle the most difficult problems facing Native American families. And that's exactly what we've done. We passed the Tribal Law and Order Act and began making Indian country a safer place to live. Thank you. We permanently authorized the Indian Health Care Improvement Act and made quality health care accessible to more Native Americans. Just this week, we streamlined leasing regulations, which will lead to more homes, more businesses, more renewable energy on the reservation. That's what changes. Yeah. 
finally, we said that even as we include Indian tribes in the broader promise of America, we're going to keep Native traditions alive. So when Michelle launched Let's Move in Indian Country, she brought lacrosse players to the White House and invited Native American children to plant the three sisters crops in the White House vegetable garden. While our work together is far from over, today we can see what change looks like. It's the Native American owned small business that's opening its doors, or uh, a worker helping a school renovate. It's new roads, houses, it's wind turbines going up on tribal lands, and crime going down in tribal communities. That's what change looks like. So we should be proud of what we've done together. But of course, that should sharpen our resolve to do even more. Because as long as Native Americans face unemployment and poverty rates that are far higher than the national average, we're going to have more work to do. And I wake up every day focused on how to get this economy growing and create jobs for every American, faster. We're working to rebuild an economy where no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, you can make it if you try. That's right. And that's why I propose the American Jobs Act to help all Americans, including first Americans, to make it through these tough times. That's why my administration has addressed the obstacles that are unique to Indian country by guaranteeing loans for homeowners and small business owners and, and tribes. It's why we're working to equip your communities with high-speed internet access. And even as we meet at this moment, we have to prepare the next generation for the future which is why earlier today, I signed an executive order to launch the White House Initiative on American Indian and Alaska Native Education. here, Secretary Salazar, they're going to work together on this effort to prepare Native American youth to compete for the high-skilled, good jobs of tomorrow. We're going to find ways to reduce the dropout rate. We're going to help students who've already dropped out re-enter the education system. And we're going to strengthen our tribal colleges and universities. They are cornerstones of their community, and they deserve our support. So we've made progress together. And a lot of that progress is possible because of all of you. Because the ideas that you shared at the last two conferences and that you're sharing at this conference. And that's why I'm looking forward to hearing the results of the discussion that you have today. I want to know what we can do to keep tack tackling the tough issues, from education to jobs to health care to public safety. It'd be nice to say that the work was done, but we know the truth. We haven't solved all our problems. We've got a long road ahead. But I believe that one day we're going to be able to look back on these years and say that this was a turning point. This was the moment when we began to build a strong middle class in Indian country. The moment when businesses, large and small, began opening up in reservations. The moment when we stopped repeating the mistakes of the past and began building a better future together. One that honors old traditions and welcomes every Native American into the American dream. We've got to finish what we started. So today I want to thank all of you for everything that you do. I want to ask you to keep going. And when you go back home, make, uh, making your communities uh, better places to live, I want you all to know that you've got a partner in Washington. You have an administration that understands the challenges that you face. And most importantly, you've got a president who's got your back. <laughs>